Hey, it's Scott Jansen, and welcome to How to Turn More People into Paying Customers Mini Course. I'm excited for you to join me on this program, as these very strategies I'm about to show you will be the difference between a business that pulls in a few sales here and there, or a business that is highly profitable that could generate a six or multiple six-figure income. And the best part is, it works for any business that requires you to sell to customers. You won't need to worry how to do Facebook advertising for now. You won't have to make cold calls. You won't need to have a worldwide audience that follows everything you do. All you need to know is what you want from your business and how to use these very strategies successfully. So if you're a therapist, a hypnotherapist, life coach, NLP practitioner, personal trainer, or even a healer, you can master this program and apply it to your business today. So be sure to grab a pen and paper and take plenty of notes because this content is only as good as the action you take. So if you want to begin to turn more people into paying customers with ease and with no arguments, let's begin with this question. What is the biggest issue that therapy business owners face today? Would you say it's actually getting paid clients, maybe getting high paying referrals, Would you say that standing out in an oversaturated market where it seems that every therapist is doing the same thing as you, or would it be all of the above? Well, if you agree that all of the above is the issues you are facing, I agree with you. And believe it or not, it's these strategies that I'm about to show you, which were the same things I applied to my own business to generate a multiple six-figure income each year, a four-month waiting list of clients, and dozens of paid speaking gigs all around the world. But to get to this level of success, we need to first look at your customers. If you have ever been to a business workshop or even hired a business coach, you'll be familiar with creating what is known as the perfect client profile. This exercise involves you creating and answering questions about what your perfect customer likes, dislikes, their jobs, and what they earn, and maybe even more demographic equations. And if you've done this exercise and are trying to offer your service to this person, I want you to actually throw this all away. Why? Well, firstly, this customer does not exist. This customer is made up. Sure, you may get close to describing a real customer, but this exercise shows you nothing about getting and finding real paying customers. In order to understand this further, let me ask you this. Why would someone buy what you have? Why would someone spend their hard-earned money on your service? Would you agree? It's because they have a problem. And as a therapist or a coach, it's your job to fix. But just understanding the demographics of a customer by their age, their job, where they live, and what they like to do is not enough to give us an insight into what our customers' pains, fears, frustrations, and challenges are. And these are the very things we are hired to fix. But believe it or not, the biggest issues with therapists trying to find new customers exists actually in the customers they are targeting and trying to attract. The bottom line is, how you sell and offer your business and service is what gets you paying customers. And where therapists get it wrong is they try and sell their service to the same type of person based on their ideal customer which we know now, this customer does not exist, which answers the question, where are all your clients? We need to understand that what we do does not have one ideal customer. We have customers. There are many different types of people that could buy your service. If you're selling a therapy session for smokers, you're not just selling your service to people who wanna quit, you're selling to people that have tried to quit but failed before. You're selling your service to people who want to quit, but don't believe in hypnosis or therapy. You're selling to people who just want to quit smoking, maybe after dinner. You're even selling to people who want to quit cigars. The point is that in order to really break through into a business that creates a multiple six-figure income or more, you need to sell to all different types of customers. And every new customer, essentially, needs to be sold to differently. You need to craft a new message that hits their individual pains, frustrations, challenges, and desires differently. Why? Because every customer is different. As an example, 
If I'm selling my stop smoking session to a smoker who has tried to quit before, I may emphasize that my therapy is ideal for people who have tried to quit before but failed. If I'm selling to a customer that wants to quit smoking but doesn't believe in hypnosis, I would have to emphasize on how hypnosis works perfectly for smokers so I can destroy the objection that would avoid them coming to my session. Each of these messages persuades a different customer but also satisfies a different desire. And we need to get clear on our message and our service in order to attract these different types of customers. One message of you as a therapist that may help smokers isn't enough to persuade a customer who is a cigar smoker or a smoker who wants to quit to improve their health so they can run a marathon. The action of smoking is the same, but the desire to quit is always different. And this is the same for your personal training clients, your life coaching clients, and everyone in between. To really attract new paying customers to your business, you must focus on those frustrations and pains hard. Now, when most therapists want to grow their business, they reach out to what I call the easy customer. These are the customers that you target and say something like this. Do you want to lose weight? Then they say yes. And you say, okay, pay for the session and I'll show you how. But again, what about all those other customers who, yes, want to lose weight, but have their own objections to why they think they can't? Your message needs to be different to attract that type of client. Or what about all those people that would prefer to see you on a month-to-month basis, or even the other people that want to diet instead of a training routine? It's all different. And this leads us into an important point. What if there are customers out there that want to destroy their addictions of maybe a spider phobia, but don't realize that life coaching or hypnosis or even NLP can actually help them? Or what if there are customers out there who get anxious in large crowds, but don't realize that it's not normal? And actually don't realize that it is anxiety at all and they blame everything else. These are the new customers we need to attract. You will only attract those customers who you can link your message to their pain properly. We cannot expect clients to make the connection that just because they have tried to quit before, that your session will work for them, even though your message says, do you want to quit? You need to come and see me. People are lazy in their assumptions, and I've been witness to this in my own training seminars. I can laugh about it now, but do you know the amount of people that will come to my hypnosis training courses, read the sales page I have, read the advertising I do on Facebook, read my blogs, watch my videos, and still come up to me and say things like, well, I didn't realize you were a hypnotist, and I didn't know this course was about hypnosis. But we cannot get mad at this. It shows that people have their own reasons for doing things. And if your message does not suit their desires and their needs, they can get lost on what you're trying to tell them. So in order to do this, we can actually break down three types of customers that if you craft your message and your service correctly, you will attract a larger paying audience of new customers that you had previously no idea you existed and they had no idea you existed either. As stated, there are three customers that we deal with. And this is the same regardless of your business or service. These are the informed customer, the afflicted customer, and the oblivious customer. The informed customer is someone that knows about you, your service, what you do, and has maybe even bought from you before. But the informed customer has choice to pick either you or your competition at any time. They are informed about choice. So to get the attention of this customer, you must offer something unique and different. It could be a special type of therapy that you've created or that maybe you're a mobile therapist that can travel to someone's house, or that you offer only Skype sessions to avoid any travel issues. But what most therapists do is offer just a different price or something mundane like a free consultation first to try and convince this customer. You need to offer something that creates curiosity that no other therapist is doing in order to convince the informed customer to say yes to you and not your competition. In order to find your difference and what I call your unique message, one way you can do it is to stalk your competition. Find out what they offer and create something new, something different, something better, something more convenient, or even something that no one has ever heard of before. Maybe it's a new style of therapy, a new way to lose tummy fat, a new way to set goals, 
a new way to work with elderly clients, a new exercise that strengthens the core and helps with back pain, a new way to hypnotize clients who are resistant, or maybe it's a new way to help clients find their passion in life without any formal education. Regardless of what it is, my point is, don't copy your competition. Your message of uniqueness must stand out and stand out in a strong world that is bombarded with thousands of new offers, products, and services every single day. If you don't believe me, go ahead and check your email on your spam folder. See how much is offered to us every single day. So a message of, I have a great product and you should buy from me because it's great, will not cut it. The reason and the only reason people will pay for your service is if your message suits their needs and desires. Let me give you an example. I saw this post recently on Facebook that would suit an informed customer. I have an appointment this Thursday for anyone who wants to give up smoking. And you've probably seen these messages yourself all over Facebook. Now, although the message is very weak, we can still see how this message would target a customer who knows what you do, is a smoker and wants to quit, and has time on Thursday to actually give up. But to suit all three customers, things would need to change in this message as each customer needs to be targeted with a different strategy. So let's start from scratch. Let's take the idea of this message and change it to suit all three, including the informed a little bit better. So the informed message may sound like this. As you know, I'm a hypnotherapist and work with clients who wanna give up smoking. I have an appointment this Thursday, so contact me if you'd like to book this spot. Now this is direct and straight to the point. It has reinforced the fact that you're a hypnotherapist and you work with clients who wanna quit smoking, and if they have Thursday free, they should contact you. However, it's still missing something. And this is the key to working with the informed customer. It's missing its uniqueness and a different message. By uniqueness, I mean that the informed customer knows they have choice and can either choose you or your competition. So to stand out in the crowd, you need to offer something that is unique in your message. So when creating a message for the informed customer, you must start with the unique feature. It's this unique feature to your service that will help you stand out in a crowd of every other therapist that says the same thing. If you want to witness this, go ask five people in your industry that offer the same service as you do and see what they say. You'll probably find they say the same thing you do. They offer the same service you do and even the same price. But I'm getting off track here. So let's add this uniqueness into our message. So it may sound like this. As you know, I'm a hypnotherapist and work with clients who want to quit smoking. And I do this with a special six-step process that will help you quit within 45 minutes and is guaranteed to stop relapse. I have an appointment this Thursday, so contact me if you'd like to book this spot. Now our message, as an example, offers something unique and different. But remember, your uniqueness must be true, not something you can't prove. To stand out with the informed customer, you must offer something different than all your competition. Now let's move on to the afflicted. The afflicted is a customer that knows they have a problem and knows they can fix it. They just haven't realized that your exact service is the answer they're looking for. These type of people actively search Google and Facebook looking for an answer to their problems. So in order to get the attention of the afflicted customer that is actively seeking a solution, you must connect their journey of trying to solve their problem with your service. If they're looking for an answer, make your service be the answer they find. As an example, are you sick and tired of wasting money on patches and electronic cigarettes? If so, I'm a therapy specialist in helping people quit smoking and can help you quit so you never have to worry about wasting money on patches again. Now, as you can hear in this example, the afflicted customer in this case may have a frustration of patches and electronic cigarettes that just don't work. So in the example I gave, we have only targeted the afflicted customer who is sick of patches and the electronic cigarettes. But there are numerous things that the afflicted customer may have tried and failed at. As another example, maybe they're sick of relapsing or are worried about putting on weight after they quit, or even that hypnosis doesn't work for stop smoking in the long run. There are endless amounts of these things that the afflicted customer may have tried and failed at and is actively searching social media in order to find an answer. In order to get the most from the afflicted customer, you must research these real people and find out what their most common concerns are, 
solve that concern inside your message, then move on to the next concern with another message. And later on, I'll show you how to find these real people. Lastly, we have the oblivious. The oblivious customer has no idea they have a problem or that it can be solved. They're not looking for an answer or a solution. They're just dealing with it and putting up with their pains and frustrations. To get the attention of an oblivious customer, you must expand and broaden your message. The oblivious customer doesn't really know anything about anything, meaning that if they have a frustration or pain in their life that they think is normal, they have no idea there is a solution for it because they're not looking for one. So to attract the oblivious customer, your message needs to be broad like this. These lifestyle choices are the direct link to an unhappy life and can be the cause of major health issues. And you've seen messages like this all over the internet. This broad message can connect with many people. Then, if they decide to read more and click onto your website or your sales page, you simply take the problem they're experiencing and offer the service to fix it. And this is what I call the continuation message. The continuation message needs to increase the pain of their problem so they realize that it is a problem and it's not normal. Then you just need to attach your service to it. But there is another issue with the oblivious customer. The oblivious customer may not even realize that your type of therapy exists, meaning they have no idea about it and in most cases have never heard of it. So you need to connect their problem to your service just like you did with the afflicted customer. It's just with the oblivious customer, you need to make them curious enough with your message first before you offer your service. These people are not looking for a solution for anything. Heck, they don't even know they have a problem. And if they did, they just think their problem is normal and they're putting up with it. So saying something like this, if you're looking to give up smoking, come and book me in this Friday. This would not appeal to the oblivious customer as they're not looking to quit. Or do they realize smoking is an issue? Or do they realize the issues they're having with their health from the cigarettes is causing them a big problem? They just don't know. So to further improve your awareness of what type of customer suits what type of message, here is an example of messages for all three customers just in the hypnosis niche. Why? Because I'm a hypnotist and I can make my point clearly. And this is for a stop smoking client. So I may say something like this to my informed customer. Do you want to give up smoking? My three-step wow system will help you destroy that addiction. For the afflicted customer, I may say something like this. Are you noticing the yellow stains on your teeth and your fingers and are ashamed of how they look? Book me in today to finally give up your smoking habit. For the oblivious customer, it may sound like this. Ever notice how out of breath you get even from just walking up the stairs in your house? This is the reason why your lungs are struggling to breathe. Then my continuation message on my sales page or website would explain how smoking can cause shortness of breath and then I would offer my service as a way to fix it. So before I show you some super simple ways to get your message correct that will attract these paying customers to you, let me recap just quickly. At the beginning, I showed you why creating a customer profile based on guessing is a surefire way to lose real paying customers. Then I went on to tell you that we essentially have three types of customers that we can present our offer to. And based on the type of customer, this will depict what we say about our business and inside our message. If they are informed, we must include our uniqueness in our industry with our, as an example, powerful six step system, or even our new way to work with phobias or addiction. This uniqueness gets attention and cuts through the noise of our competition who are all saying the same thing. If we want to get the attention of the afflicted customer, however, we must begin with stating their problem and connecting our service to resolving this problem. These people are actively looking for how to fix themselves. Offer your service as the best way for them to fix their problems. And lastly, if we are working with the oblivious customer, we must create a message that generates curiosity based on a symptom they are feeling or noticing. Then the continuation message needs to explain that their symptom is caused by a real problem and that their problem can be solved by working with you. This person doesn't know they have a problem. This person doesn't know they have a problem, but if you bring their attention to the symptom they're feeling, then teach them that this is based on a real problem. You are helping this customer understand the severity of their problem. So keep your message broad and curious. 
you'll use these words inside your messaging to grab the attention of the oblivious customer. So as we come closer to completing this program, I did promise you earlier to show you how to find these real people with real problems. When constructing your message, it's always good practice to use the words of frustration and pain to connect with your clients and customers even more based on how they're feeling. In all the messages you create with any of the three customers, we want our customers to say something like this. Hey, reading this message, that sounds like me. That sounds exactly what I'm experiencing. This connects to them instantly and makes us seem like you know exactly what their biggest pains and frustrations are. If, however, your client has headaches and you keep talking about back pain, even though they are strongly linked, your client will brush past your ad and seek a better option for their service. And it might be your competition that they find. So with that, here are some examples of how and where to find these exact customers. If you have ever shopped at Myers or any big chain superstore and have tried clothes on in the fitting room before, have you ever wondered why there are staff folding clothes at the desk just outside? And it's not just Myers. These retail giants are actually eavesdropping on you. They want you trying on the clothes, then maybe mentioning to a friend how well the clothes fit or how well they don't fit or how you like or don't like the color or the material. These comments let these retail giants know exactly what they need to change based on real feedback. So where do we eavesdrop? Well, firstly, we have Facebook. In the late 2014, Google indexed that Facebook has 620 million Facebook groups. And recently in 2017, Mark Zuckerberg suggests that these numbers will grow close to 1.1 billion groups by the end of the year. So with so much choice, it's as easy as finding a Facebook group in your niche and what you're interested in and the type of clients you are trying to attract and becoming an active member. Look through the comments. What are people saying? What are they like? What do they don't like? What are their frustrations? What is the language they use? And even what have they tried to fix with their problem before? Then it's your job to use this exact information to craft your message. As an example, if you're a life coach and you've tried to promote your services of goal setting to any of your three customers with a message of, do you have blocks in your life? Do you want to untangle your mind? Contact me today. Now, this was a real ad, by the way. Who would this suit? Would you say maybe the informed customer or maybe even the afflicted or maybe no one? What if the language you use is not what your customers are saying? But if you use the language that your customers are not using, you will miss the mark and not connect with your message. In addition, you could be trying to promote your goal setting strategy only to find out that real paying customers, not the ones you made up with your imaginary client profile, are saying they want to unblock their money issues to attract more income in their life. You could be offering the wrong service altogether. Now here is the trick. This doesn't mean you need to create a whole new service or product. As in this example, goal setting or therapy in general or coaching or even personal training is a broad service meaning it can help anyone. It just means your message needs to be different for your customers. As an example, let's say I wanted to teach personal trainers how to make more money by charging more from their sessions. But I promoted my message stating something like, use my four-step income generator to charge more and get it. Now this message may appeal to the afflicted, but if I really want to target personal trainers, I would need to make that clear. So I might say something like this, are you sick and tired of training clients as a personal trainer only for them to argue your price? Well, my four step income generator will show you how to charge more and create a premium personal training offer that your clients will never argue. Do you see my point? Your messaging not only should work for the three types of customers, but it can even target a specific niche of your paying customers. And the best bit is it's repeatable, meaning that your message might target personal trainers, then when they've all bought from you, you may move on to men who smoke, women who want a better relationship, or even teenagers who want more confidence in their life. Master one type of customer, then move on to the next. Just remember, in every customer group, there are customers who are afflicted, there are customers who are informed, and there are customers who are oblivious. Find the most relevant pain and frustration, which I mean whatever group has the most amount of pain customers, and target that pain or frustration first, then move on to the next, then the next, and then the next. It's repeatable. If, however, you notice inside these Facebook groups that there are more women wanting to lose weight than men, target women first. 
If you find more men are wanting to quit smoking, market your message to them. Do you see my point? The way you market your message is the only way clients will relate to you and what you say. If you guess, well, they won't need to read any further. So not only do we have Facebook groups, we have other social media platforms like Reddit or Quora. These platforms allow for real conversation in real time. All you need to do is just find your niche like Facebook and begin a conversation. Here is an actual message we have used in Quora for years. My name is Scott Jansen and I often hear the biggest problems new therapists and business owners are having while trying to find paying customers. What's your biggest frustration that you're experiencing today? Even if it's small, I'd love to hear from you. Now, as you can see in this message, I'm looking for a specific type of problem, which is getting paid clients, as this is what I base my business around. And I wanna see what real people respond with. So I know how to craft my messages, I know how to write my blogs, and I even know how to create paid programs for these people. I'm making note of the language, the words, the phrases, and even the slang these customers use. Everything I create is not based on a guess. I'm answering real frustrations and problem, and even this program was created from one comment. In my sales pages and blogs, I use the same language these frustrated business owners and therapists are facing, so it connects with them and makes them think I know exactly what I'm talking about and I understand them perfectly. These exact strategies have been the direct line between my blogs being viewed by close to 100,000 users every month in a very oversaturated market, my subscribers list growing by 15 to 25 highly targeted subscribers each day with a 49 to 71% open rate, an above benchmark click-through rate for my campaign offers, free gifts, and helping my business generate a multiple six-figure income all from my computer. Now, this is not to brag. It's to point out the power of getting real customer feedback and knowledge in contrast to just guessing what you think people need. You need to go straight to the horse's mouth and speak their language. So to wrap this up, if you're guessing as to what new paying customers need and want from you, and if you're only marketing your message to one type of client, whether you realize it or not, you can now reverse engineer everything you've been doing and turn your business and service into the best on the block. Now to get the most from this program, I've created and attached a workbook with message creation ideas. Now these are only examples. Do not copy and paste them as I'm using the language, pains and frustrations and how to solve their problems just by guessing, because I don't know what your customers need. But you know exactly how to find what they need and what they want and the exact language they're using.